Welcome. Let me discuss another standard quadratics question from an Algebra 2 course. Um, these are questions designed to try to give a real world relevance to what we're doing. And it's usually about costs and revenues for some company that produces some product. Um, I'm going to let you know my bias right off the bat. I think these questions are absolutely silly and kids see through it too. For starters, there is no company that has a formula for its profit function or its revenues or costs. Maybe costs are something, they might estimate these things, but no actual formula. And there's no way these formulas are going to be quadratic to begin with. But now let's pretend that we have a company that knows a quadratic formula for its revenue. Um, I make these questions silly. Since they are silly to begin with, my kids can sniff through that. Let's make them about silly products. So in this question, I have a company that produces and sells flugel by the pound. And its revenue and cost functions are given by r of x equals negative 2x, x times minus 600. And then the cost function is 200x plus a horrible number, 80,000 big. Here, x represents the number of pounds of flugel produced per day, and r and c are each in units of dollars. All right, so the idea of these questions, at least in, in the course I was working with, was to put this on the calculator section of the exam, because this is meant to be a calculator question. What kids were meant to do was sketch these things on their calculators, and then somehow use these function menus to find intersection points and this and that. But they deliberately choose awkward numbers, because part of the challenge is to find the right screen size in order to properly sketch these things. And you can probably tell by the tone of my voice, I really have um, a bias against that type of thinking. I don't think that has much pedagogical, pedagogical value. I'm sure we could argue this some. But if you're going to do a question like this, it's really just getting kids to practice playing with quadratics and linear functions. I, my advice is just do it. Um, kids might not know the words revenue and cost, so we will talk about that in our class. So they know that revenue is the amount of money you bring in when you make, make a certain amount of product, and the cost is how much it costs you to do that. Um, and kids will then realize, well, profit's going to have to then be how much money you brought in minus how much you spent to do that. So kids will naturally see that the profit the, is the difference of these two functions for themselves. Anyhow, let's go ahead. Let me show how my kids, with really not more than, much more than what I've just said there, having just stud, studied the basic shapes of quadratics and so forth, would handle a question like this. I'd like that way to nut the way through it. To them, this is not a calculator section question. This is just do it, just like Nike says. Just do it. The very first part of the question is give rough sketches of these two functions the same set of axes, which is brilliant. Um, drawing a picture is always the good first step. A picture speaks a thousand words. So let's go ahead. So in this question, we see that the first one is the quadratic. And my kids would say, hopefully, that um, there's two x values staring us in the face that are deemed, themselves, are deemed interesting. For example, x putting an x equals 0 into this formula with the first factor of x in there, clearly the revenue is 0. And then putting x equals 600 also gives a revenue of 0. So since I know this is quadratic, and we've done a little study that quadratics are U-shaped graphs, this has negative 2 for its steepness. It's going to be upside down quadratic, with x equals 0 and x, being, x equals 600 both being interesting. In fact, they both give an, an output of 0. So the graph, without doing much work, must be like this. 0, 600, an upside down U-shape with these two symmetrical points on it. In fact, right off the bat, I can say that the middle, 300, must be the maximum revenue, which I have a feeling, if I read ahead, is actually one of the questions. Surprise, surprise, of course it's going to be one of the questions. For which x value of x is the revenue at a maximum? Done, 300. All right, so there's a nice sketch of the revenue function. Um, I don't know, we might want to argue, just just with the question silly, why why would the revenue go down once you get beyond selling 300 pounds of, uh, making 300 pounds of flugel? Um, I don't know, maybe demand goes down or something, I don't know. You can have some, I suppose you can have a nice discussion. Anyhow, that, that's, that's, that's too fun to really go on an algebra two class. Uh, the cost function. Uh, we'd recognize it as a straight line graph of slope 200 starting at the 80,000 point. And right now there's an interesting little question. 80,000 is somewhere on the y-axis, but I horizontal, oh, shouldn't call it y-axis, the vertical axis, but um, I've given no sense of scale. In fact, it might be up here, and it might be some slope of 200 like this, way above the quadratic. I suspect it's going to have to intersect because these questions are designed to be interesting. And in fact, we could just assume it does, because if it doesn't, the math later on will probably tell us it doesn't. That was a very, would be a very smart kid, in my opinion. But let's just be clever and just make sure we show all our work, no matter what, because we know what the game we're meant to be playing. So um, I need to know that the, this cost function actually does set off. So I guess, uh, I didn't really want to work this out, but let's work out how high this quadratic is, which means I need to plug in x equals 300 into the revenue formula. So r of 300, I guess it's going to be what, negative 600 times 300 minus 600, negative 300. So that's basically 6 times 3, 18 with uh, 4 zeros. So what's that, 180,000. All right. That's 180,000 high. We've got a graph of slope 200 starting at 80,000, so it definitely is lower, and it's going to be some graph of slope um, going up. I guess I could still miss the quadratic. I guess what I really should do is work out C of 300 as well, and just check that it's actually below 180,000. I'm going to be lazy. 
I'm going to assume it really is below 180,000. So I've got a graph of C of X, something like this, and there's a rough sketch of my two functions on the same set of axes. Brilliant. Um, part one done, part three done. What is the break-even point for the company? I probably wouldn't even mention what break-even means. I'd have kids just go at this and see what happens. Um, just if you're using your common sense, I guess there are two points that seem interesting in this picture. This x value, whatever it is, and this x value. If you just actually pause to think what this first x value means, it's the first time that revenue starts to become higher than the cost. That is, the amount of money you bring in is more than the amount of money you cost to make it. So that's, that seems like a really good point for a company. This is interesting. How many pounds of flugel do I need to make in order to actually start making a profit? So that's probably what break-even point is. I bet a company would really like to know what that point is. Um, this is also sort of break-even, but maybe in sort of a negative sense, break, I don't know how to say break-even, break-odd, I don't know. This is where revenue starts to go down and cost keeps going up, and actually actually gets bad. Your costs go up and you're not bringing in as much money anymore. That's a, that's a bad point, so you might want to know this. But break-even is probably referring to this guy. All right, to answer this question, the kids, hopefully my kids, uh, answer the question in algebra class, hopefully my kids will realize we need to know when is the revenue equal to the cost. All right, so if this was a calculator question, you meant to get out function menu sub part five and use a trace button and left estimate and right estimate. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Just do it. Negative two x times x minus 600 is meant to equal 200 x plus 80,000. All right, annoying numbers. Two uh, x squared plus 1200 x is 200 x plus 80,000. Uh, so track 200 x on both sides. Two x squared plus 1000 x is 80,000. And I can make my life a little bit simpler by dividing everything by 2. So x squared plus 500x equals, um, oh, oh, I'm already off. See, I'm bad. Negative 2x squared, negative 2x squared. Let's divide by negative 2 is negative 40,000. So it's negative 500. Whew, bad on me. Negative 2x squared. Well, you know, we're all human. That's good. At least I caught myself. Okay, so now I can see this is the equation we need to solve. Um, my kids probably wouldn't use the quadratic formula. Uh, we actually like to just complete the square. That is, we want to use symmetry of a box since these are called quadratics after all, and quadratics are all about squares. So let's use what the name implies. Um, x squared piece. All right, so if I draw a square, x squared must be in there, and it comes from x times x. And I want two pieces of the same that make negative 500x. I guess I need a negative 250x, negative 250x. So if you look at the complete square videos, we understand why I want to keep the symmetry. Something times negative times x equals negative 250x, and so negative 250, negative 250. So this number, final piece I want, is basically 25 times 25, 625 with uh, two zeros, I believe. All right, so 2,500 is the number I'd really like to have. So let's add 62,500 to both sides. All right, that gives me, whoops, add, it's all damn bad, x squared minus 500x plus 62,500 equals um, 225 with a couple of zeros. Uh, which is kind of nice, because I expect this would be nice, since it's an algebra class, all numbers turn out to be nice. 225 is actually 15 squared. So what I've really got here, the left-hand side according to my box is really x minus 250 squared, whoops, equals um, 22500. Take square roots, x minus 250 is either 150 or negative 150. Add uh, 250 to both sides. Let's put an or in, sorry. X is either 400 or it's 100. And lo and behold, this must be the X equals 100 point. This must be the X equals the 400 point. And I can say the break-even point occurs at X equals 100. The uh, maximum revenue is at X equals 300, we've seen. And the final question is, which value of X is the profit at a maximum? Now, it's very tempting to say, well, 300, we've just worked that out. But, uh, of course, this is the little trick question. We must have a little trick question on these things to make sure people think. Um, let's actually work out a formula for the profit and play with it. And that sounds like a different colored pen to me. All right, so profit, whoops, P of X. That's really bad. Let's try that. Clear the, clear the board, sorry. I know I get complaints about my handwriting, so I should at least try to be semi-neat at least once in my life. The profit for X pounds of flugel is how much money you brought in minus how much money it costs you to do it. All right, so there we go, let's do it. So it's negative two x squared um, uh, minus, oops, plus uh, 1200 x uh, minus the cost, minus 200 x minus 80,000. Uh, so we've got negative two x squared uh, plus 1000 x 
minus 80,000. And then I'm going to just play the game of all I need to do is find the good x value. So I'm interested in the x value. Notice I never asked me what the profit actually was. So I'm going to focus on the x part of this equation. I'm going to pull out a factor of x, negative 2x plus 1,000 minus 80,000. So we see the profit is its own quadratic graph. And I'm going to give it a really quick sketch, really bad. With x equals 0 is interesting because then I get negative 80,000. And at x equals 500, things are interesting. I also get... It's 500, negative 80,000. So it's an upside down U shaped graph at negative 80,000 at two places. Well, where's the maximum profit? Right in the middle of my two interesting x values. Right in the middle of 0 and 500 is 250. 250. Maximum profit occurs at 250. And if the question really went further and asked me what is the maximum profit, I guess I should plug it back into this profit form and actually work out the number. But it didn't ask for it, I'm not going to do it. All right. So that's how I'm going to nut my way through these problems. And did I need to calculate it, that at all? Maybe just to work out the square root of 22,500 or whatever it was. Um, there is a little mystery here. Uh, we worked out the two break-even points of some sense was 100 and 400. And the middle of those is actually 250. Is that a coincidence that the maximum profit occurs right smack bang in the middle of these two break-even points and break-odd points, what do you want to call them? Hmm. So there's a little mystery there. Will the profit always be the average of these two points here? Kind of weird, because we had to go through a totally different quadratic to get there, but there's a nice mystery. So at least an Algebra 2 exam question can offer a mystery of some kind. Whew, that's what I say. All right. Thanks very much.